Okay, today we're going to find out what's inside this electronic dartboard. Now this is just going to be, I don't know if they're all made exactly the same way, but this is going to be the Halix dartboard, and it's probably a particular model number, but I would have to guess that this company makes them all the same way. And I'm curious to know how it works, because... Uh, now we've lost all the darts, so I'm just going to be kind of tapping them with this um, dowel. I, it definitely doesn't register inside the little circles. It's like I don't think that the the spear of the dart is actually making the contact. It seems like the whole plate is moving because but how does it uh, make its contact evenly? That's the question. And I'm wondering if it's going to be what kind of array is set up in there. Is it going to be like a giant circuit board with all these little contact points on there or is it just going to be a bunch of contact points with a bunch of wires leading to them. But uh, yeah, the thing is, like say if I hit the 7 here, and that registers... Okay, let me do this. Okay, but then like the double here, I think it's double. Yeah. And then triple in your bullseye. There you go. Anyway, I'm um, very curious to see how that's set up. Of course, the, the main circuit board is going to be down here somewhere, I'm sure, and then the, the question will be the array here. And it's just a whole bunch of screws on the back, pretty widely spaced out. And I'm um, very curious because it looks almost like you can see something shining, shining through there. See that? Something shining through there. wonder what that is. But we're going to find out, so let's take it apart. Okay, all the screws are off. Let's take a look inside here. Good, that comes all the way off. Oh, yes, look at this. Okay, so this room, wow. Okay, that's going to look quite a bit cooler on the other side. Let me try to put this cover down somewhere. There we go. All right, so this thing, this is reminding me of what what it looks like inside of a PC keyboard. Clearly, all these little circles in this array are the contact points. Oh, look at this. It's a two layer, layers. So, yeah, that is very much like what's inside of a um, PC uh, computer keyboard, um, these plastic... Wow. Okay, so each square... Yeah, let me get this all the way out here. I'm going to have to lay this out. I'm going to have to set the camera down for a moment. Be right back. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. It looks like a nifty little double ribbon cable plug. Upper and lower levels. Back to the circuit board. I'm going to unplug those and take these off showing where that came from. Okay, so I got that off of there. Now one of them, one of them came apart where the um, contacts, the whole thing slipped out of there. Let me show you here. There are the contact points there. I'll go and match up to the contact points in there. And onto there. But the other one came out clean, which is good. If there's any hope of this thing working again. And so now the two plates here, the two um, sleeves, have s some glue points on them around the array. And I've just got to decide if I can loosen those without ruining the whole thing so that I can see under there. Or maybe this is good enough. You know what I really want to see there. So let's see what I can do. Okay, I've got them separated now so we can get a good look at it. Now, what we have here are basically three sheets of plastic. I didn't realize there was an, um, one sandwiched in the middle. And I can see how it works. Uh, we do have some color, colorization here 
This is oxidation, I suppose. This is actually a pretty old dartboard. And considering that everything is very porous, and air can get in there pretty readily, I would call that oxidation. And so what happens here is all these points on this side, of course, line up with all the points on this side. Look at that neat array there in the middle. The way they did that. But you also have this inner sleeve. Got to try to separate that. There we go. See that? And so the gap in between these lower contact points and these contact points on this circle are only separated by the width of this plastic piece here. And so the only thing that can make them make contact are going to be these little contact points in here. So when the dart hits one of these squares, it pushes these little nubs into these little nubs and forces, you know, like say this is one of the squares right here, clearly. Say the dart hit here or here or here or here, it would hit the whole plate. All four would contact at once or one at a time or something like that. But all it's doing is bridging the gap in between these contact points and these contact points. So when the dart hits, it hits that plate and pushes contact through and into the other contact. If, um, if that's uh, clear, it's probably clear. And everybody watching says, we get it, we get it already. All right, so basically that's how that works. And now all these are free to come out. I don't think I'm gonna take them all out, but that is how the inner side of that looks. Now let's get to the circuit board. Okay, so here we go. I've got all the screws out of these, and I think the whole thing's going to kind of peel up all in one big piece. But, you know, obviously there's the back side of your speaker. This is the power switch here. Uh, curiously, yeah, it's still on. I don't think I ever turned this off. Uh, well, maybe it is off. Nope, it's still on. Okay. But anyway, um, let's pull this board up off here. There's that funny connector there. Which, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's the way the ar array had to be plugged in. Get all that. I bet that was done by a robot. Okay, let's pick this up off here. And... Well, almost. Okay, let's flip this one over and take a look. Okay. See, everything is flattened down. I guess because it's just so thin and they needed to make the room. See how they pressed everything down like that? And we got some nice LEDs here. And your digital display. Look at that nice green one there. Okay, and a whole bunch of resistors. I'll just kind of pan across the uh, board because I know that there's electronic engineers that like to take a look at this kind of stuff. And I'll get in tight on those chips so hopefully you can see the numbers. Looks like there was, um, see how these this angled um, holes there? It's like it's set up for, oh no, I'm sorry, that is the... No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yep, that's the back side of those. That uh, funny connector there. Okay. And then over there, that's where all the sounds are kept, in that little chip there.
sound you hear is somebody pressure washing outside. It is a law of nature that if you're going to film a video, someone will start a machine up. Okay, let me try to get in tight on these numbers. There we go, I hope you can read that. Sorry, it's smudged there. Then you got the other one. Appears to be basically the same thing. There's even a number on that display. Okay, in the back side of the power board. Okay, we just got a bunch of buttons. Are they the... Are they, okay, yeah, they've got little rubber buttons. Right on the... imagine that'll come off, yeah. So these are just rubber domes. And there are the contacts, which means there's got to be something up in here. Yep. Okay, I've looked this up since the last video I made. What these are, the black parts, the black circles, are little carbon-like sponges. And they do make con contact, they conduct electricity. So when you press down onto these, they make contact onto these. And thus register a contact. You can see right there, well, Right there on that one, see that whiter circle? Definitely where a contact has touched there and bridged the gap and registered a contact. So yeah, that's a pretty nifty thing that um, I learned since the, the last one is that those are conductive little carbon sponges. And I think that's I think that's it. There's your power circuit there. And yeah, that will do it. A little shorter than normal, I guess. I try to keep the uh, time down on these, but there's only so short you can make them. Anyway, so that, in a nutshell, is what's inside an electronic dartboard. It is not what I was expecting. I was expecting a circuit board. I was expecting to see a circuit board as big as that with contacts on it or a bunch of contacts on a big plastic piece with a bunch of wires leading to it. Didn't occur to me they could map it out just like they do with a, a computer keyboard. And that is pretty neat. I mean, that is really neat in my opinion. So, that'll do it. I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next one. I've got a whole bunch of stuff to take apart, and uh, everybody have a good day.